Lynn to here at Papercraft with Crafty and today I have got a whopper, an absolute whopper of a box for you. So um, here it is, it's a nice very decorative Christmassy top here, that's the idea anyway, what with Christmas coming. Um, I just love this glittery um, bow topper, so I'm going to show you how to make that. I'm just going to turn the box over, now it's five inches squared, okay, but you can see it's very deep. It's actually three and a half inches deep. Is that right? Yep, three and a half inches deep and five inches square. I'm just going to open it up and I'll show you the inside. Okay, so this is my prototype. So I'm going to be refining it as we go along um, in the coming up, the tutorial that's coming up. Okay, so you can see it's lined here and then we've got this lid that comes down. So it's got a lip inside, so it's flush fitting. Okay, so there we go. And if you look on the back, look at that. Love that. That's my hinge. Okay, so this I, is a box that I'm really, really proud of. Um, sat down and worked with it the other day. I just think it's extra special. Now the top is actually made with designer series paper. And it's the Bundle of Love pack that I've used. So it's quite a good weight paper. Um, now if you want your box to be tougher then what I would advise is to make the, both the top and the bottom in cardstock so that's purely down to you but it's really quite a tough little box anyway um, but you know if you if you really don't want it to be flimsy in any way make the top and the bottom in card and then you can always decorate the top using something pretty like this designer series paper Okay, so that is my very special Christmas box. This is number seven. No, this isn't. This is this is number eight in my countdown to Christmas. So I've been bringing you various uh, types of Christmas packaging, um, Christmas ideas. So this is number eight in my Christmas countdown. So anyway, thanks very much for joining me today. I'm going to put it to one side. I'm going to show you to how to put all of these together difference being today I'm going to show you first how um, well I'm going to concentrate first on making these these bits really for the top okay and then we'll go on and we'll we'll work on the actual scoring for the box itself so I'll pop that to one side and we're going to work on some pretty bits okay so what you're going to need for the pretty topper is the ribbon builder punch and what we need what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting out seven of these and seven of these but we're going to end up with seven of these as well that's just the waste um, unless there's a an easier way that you can find to punch everything out okay so basically we're going to cut seven times so I've got here my gold glimmer cardstock and I'm going to punch out seven Okay, so these are all our nice glittery bits and all we're going to do now is um, take these these bits here, seven of those, and we're just going to fold them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hang on, how many have I got here? Mm -mm -mm. That's right, seven. Uh, having one of those lovely moments. Right, so got some glue dots here. I have to say I'm not promoting these but I've run out of my stamping up ones so they're on my next delivery. So all you're going to do is take these like this, put a glue dot on and press it nice and firmly together. Okay, so you're going to do that for all seven of these. Okay, so I've gone ahead um, and I've stuck those together. Um, you're going to need a one inch circle punch and I've got a bit of spare um, designer series paper here so I'm going to cut myself out two circles. one to one side and then we're going to take these ones here and we're going to stick those on the base of this circle okay so
Okay, so that's my seven. You can play around with them, move them if they're not in quite the right place. Okay, until you're happy with them. Right, I think that's going to do, that's going to be fine. Then we're going to take these ones and we're going to sit them in between each of these gaps like that. Okay, so we're going to go around with those, filling these little gaps here. I'm just going to remove that one because I'm not that happy with it. Let's... Okay, so that's my seven pieces, my tails on. So I'm going to take my glue dots again now. Um, and I'm just going to pop one on the base of that and what you need to do is just fill these gaps here so I'm going to pop that in towards the centre like that so it's coming in a little I'm just going to go all the way around now filling in these gaps So that's that done and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glue gun I'm going to put a lot of glue on there and then I'm going to put that down on the top Okay, so I've gone ahead, I've used my glue gun um, I forgot to start the camera because I stopped it but basically I've stuck down that little disc onto the top there so that everything now is like very very firmly in place and that is going to be ready to put onto our topper so I mean you can finish off by punching out another little circle putting on the base if you wish might as well do that and I've got this here just to pretty it up a little I have got a little bit of OCD when it comes to things like that. Okay, so there we go. That That's now ready to go onto the top of our box when it's made. And I think you'll agree that's really quite pretty, quite eye-catching. Okay, so the next thing is just to get my labels sorted out and assembled as well. That goes on the front of the box. Um, so I've already gone ahead and I'm just going to show you what I've used here. So... It's going to be such a long tutorial if I make the whole box and do all the stamping so I've cut corners. So basically what I've done, whoop, everything's moving. That's about as far as I can go. Um, I have taken my Merry Little Labels stamp set and I have stamped out and heat embossed special delivery and I've put this on to very vanilla cardstock because it matches the DSP that I'm using for the lid. Okay, so I should be cutting that out with my layering ovals. And I have also gone ahead and stamped out this this motif here from this set which is Labels to Love. Now, both of these sets coordinate with where's it gone? My everyday labels punch okay so it, it, you really get a, a great deal for your money if you buy both of these one of these sets comes as a bundle um, and this is terrible because I don't have my um, brochures in front of me can't remember which one you can purchase as a bundle and it will save you um, I think it's something like 10% um, but you can purchase this and one of these as a bundle or you can purchase these all separately um, if you didn't want the two stamp sets it's entirely up to you but I find this one very very useful because you can actually stamp other sentiments within that one and I think that's the purpose of it but I'm using it today to create the hinge for the back of my box so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out or punch it out with my everyday label punch Okay, so that's all prepped. I should be cutting this one out using my layering ovals. So this set has got an awful lot of dies in it. So you've got plain ovals and you've got scalloped ovals. I've used what I think is the second largest um, to cut out this gold piece. And then I think this is something like the third or the fourth largest. I don't know. You have to kind of like... Um, mess around with them really but that one is going to be used to die cut this and I've used 
one of the scalloped um, ovals to cut that, which layers nicely inside that one. So like I say, it comes in all sorts of sizes really, so um, up to you what you choose to use, but I find that these layer quite well, you just need to play around with them. So what I suggest you do is sort of lay them out before you start die cutting them like I do and just see what fits within it each, you know, inside each other. So I can see that these are going to layer up well. They're all slightly smaller than the one before. So I'm just going to run this one through my big shot. Okay, so I've done that and now I'm just going to layer them on each other. Now I do find that it's better for me personally to use double sided tape when I'm adhering to gold foil. I don't like using glue on gold foil. Just a personal preference. down on there like that and I'm just going to use some wet glue for this one you can set that to one side now and let it all dry off ready to use on the box later on so that's that done okay so that's my little so I'm going to leave these now with this rosette that I prepared earlier pop those to one side um, you're also going to need a couple of strips here. Now these um, are 12 inches at the moment. I shall be cutting them down, um, but they are three quarters of an inch wide. Okay, and I've done them in glitter to match my topper. So you're going to need two strips at three, three quarter inches wide. Okay, so now we're ready to look at preparing our box. So you're going to need two pieces at 12 inches by 12 inches. So this is my sheet of designer series paper and I've got some black cardstock here. So all you're going to do here is score at one and three quarters and at three and a half on each side. So one and three quarters and three and a half. Going to do exactly the same with this. Going to be scoring on the side that's going to be showing. So I'm scoring on the side that's going to be the nice gold outside piece. Okay, so again, you're just going to simply go around and you're going to score at one and three quarters and at three and a half inches. The scoreboard. I forgot we've got to score some pieces to go onto the inside. So these are the bits that are going to create the um, flush fitting that sits around the inside of the box. So what I've got here are two pieces. These measure four and a half inches by ten and a half inches. Okay, so on the short side you're going to score at two and a quarter inches. So I'll do that for both of them. Okay. And then on the long side, you're going to score at four and seven eighths of an inch and at nine and three quarters. So bring that one back. And again, you're going to go in at four and seven eighths of an inch and at nine and three quarters. Okay. So, may as well work on these first, so I'm um, just going to burnish that. Okay, so we've done that. And now what we're going to do is a little bit of cutting. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to cut yourself a little... Oh, I've got something stuck on there. You're going to cut a little tiny wedge there and then you're just going to remove this section Okay. then you're going to cut down this section here and take a little wedge from there oh, cut down that bit as well oh dear, no hope for me 
do as I say, not as I do. Oh, there we go. Anyway, you're not going to really see it, so it doesn't matter. Little wedge from there as well. Okay, so that's looking like that. And we're going to do the same with this one. So just take a slight wedge from there and then cut down here. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to take some double sided tape, you're going to go along here like this. going to pop some double sided tape along here and on this piece right so now what you're going to do is start removing some of this backing that's going to fold down there like that And this one is going to fall down here like that. Okay, and then what you're going to do is take this side one here, pop this here, right on the edge, like that. Okay, and you're ready to stick this one down. And then this one is going to come around here, so you want to remove this backing. That is going to stick there like that. And then this is just simply going to tuck in. Like that. Okay, so that's our little piece that's going to fit inside the box when we've put the lid and the base together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, or talk you through this piece um, and the lid needs to be prepared and cut in exactly the same way. Okay, so I'm going to actually burnish after I've done my cutting here. So what you're going to do, hopefully you're able to see this. I wonder if I can come up a bit. A bit difficult to get it all in the camera. So we'll work on each corner. So what you're going to do you're going to cut down here into that first score line. Okay. Then you're going to come round and cut those two sections away like that. Then you're going to cut down this section here right down to the second score line and remove this square here. Okay. Now you've done that, you're going to wedge here, you're going to wedge here, and you're going to wedge this little area here. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same on this side, so we're going to mirror that now. Okay, so we've done that, we're going to turn it around now and work on the other side, we're going to do exactly the same thing.
okay so that is how your base should be looking okay so at this point now I'm just going to go around and I'm going to burnish all of those score lines easier to see me cutting this way. Gosh, it's not very clear, but there we go. And there we have the lid. Now, the lid, I'm not going to burnish, okay? I'm def well, I'm just going to fold it and crease it with my fingers because it makes it sit that, that bit tighter rather than doing very sort of severe and sharp burnishing. So I'm just going to go around now and just lightly fold all of these score lines. And now the box is ready to assemble. Okay, so to assemble the box then, what we're going to do is we're going to take some double-sided tape and we're going to put it on each of these sides here. Okay, so we've done that. Now what we're going to do is just put some double-sided tape across the middle here with each of these sections. So these come up here like this and they're going to be grabbed by that section. So what we're going to do is quickly fold down these these two sides here. Okay. So that's just folding over like that gently. And this side's coming over like that. Okay. So now we're ready to remove these bits on the corner. So what you want to do is form a nice right angle there. Spring up carefully. Same with the, all the other corners. So just make a nice acute right angle there and you bring your box up and press it. And we're going to be doing exactly the same with the base. So I won't talk you through that, I'll just start sticking it down and I'll run the tape on, let it run um, in fast motion. Okay. Okay, so that's the lid formed. Um, I have cut a piece here to go just to line the inside of this, okay. Um, where's my stylus? Just to show you. So this piece measures four and seven eighths of an inch square, okay. So I'm just going to grab myself a bit of glue. I'm just going to place that inside like that 
and just set that to one side whilst I work on the base. Okay, so now we're just going to glue the base together in exactly the same way. Okay, so there we have it, that's the base done. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back in this piece that we put together earlier. And you'll see that this will just slip in here really rather nicely like that. And all I'm going to do is um, put some adhesive down here and down this side. You don't need to do it on every side. Okay, so I'm just going to take my adhesive and just give it a shake. And there you go, you can see that that's in there like that and so I'm just literally, that's sitting down there nice and flush now and I'm just going to press that and I'm going to do the same on the other side and that will just hold this little piece in, in place really. So, I'm just going to let that dry off. It's looking really good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab my lid now and pop that on there, do it this way around and you'll see that that's just a really really lovely fit now okay so what we want to do is we're going to decide what's your front and what's your back okay so I want my design or my lines running this way so I'm going to use this as the back of my box now okay and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this piece that we did earlier and I'm going to just stick it into my my simply scoreboard okay and I'm just going to sit it oops everything's everything's moving around <laughs> I'm going to sit it just here right in the corner and at the one and a quarter mark I'm just going to score all the way down like that and then I'm just going to fold it this way okay like that and then it's a question of sticking it here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that's nicely together like that. And you're going to just literally put glue all over the back of it. Or double sided tape. Actually I'm going to use double sided tape for mine. So I'm just going to go for some across there. And across this side of the score line. And then on the other side of the score line. And then finally just along the very top here. Like so. Okay. And just peel off the, the protective sheets on the back. You can see actually I made a mistake there, I did score rather deeply, so don't score as hard as I did. Okay, another little top tip. You don't need to go mad. Okay, so I'm holding that together now. I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm going to pop that, I'm going to look to make sure this is as centre as I can get it. Okay. Pop that down like that, bring it up and give it a rub and then just grab the other side like that Okay, and then you see you've got yourself a really nice hinge, Okay, just don't overscore and now you can see you've got this lovely opening and closing box. Okay, So it's just a question now of pretting it up a bit. So I told you earlier about these strips which are three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch um, by 12 at the moment so what you want to do is you want to stick this one there so you just want to get some adhesive tape and put roughly that much on okay 
Okay. See, I completely overscored that. So don't make my mistake. Okay, so I'm going into the centre now of that. That die cut. I'm doing it all by eye. I'm going to stick that down there. Bring this over. Pinch it. Okay, so it's going to come the other side now. I'm going to pinch it here. And you want it running nice and straight. So I'm just going to put a piece of double sided tape in the middle here. So that's coming across like that. And I pinched it. And then I'm just going to bring this down here now. So at this point you can open up your box and work out where you need to cut it. Okay, so I'm just taking my snips, or my scissors rather. I'm just going to cut straight along the edge there, like that. Okay, and now I'm just going to put some adhesive tape down here and here. Sorry, I'm really having trouble getting everything into the camera shot. It's because the box is so big. <laughs> but I think it's brilliant. I love, I love, love, love this box. So. Yeah. Like my last one, my last Christmas project. When I made this one, it was kind of, it was again... One of those eureka moments when you know you've sort of made something that's really quite, quite good. So anyway, this is going to come down here now and stick like that. Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same with the other side using our other strip of gold glimmer paper. Exciting now, nearly at the end. Just going to add a few little bits to finish it off. Okay, so just pinching that again on that bend and putting that into place like that. So there we go. It's looking really good, isn't it? I'm just going to turn it on its side now and I'm going to bring back this piece. And I'm just going to determine where I want that. So actually, the easiest thing to do is I'm going to run a bit of tape and I'm going to use these bits, these lines here as my guide. So I've got that line there and that line there. So how you do yours is entirely up to you. But all I'm going to do is put a piece of double-sided tape running from here to here. And then on the reverse of this, on the bottom half, so there's the top, here's the bottom, roughly below half, I'm going to put a bit there, and then a bit right along the very bottom. You can use glue if you would prefer. Okay, I'm just going to take that now. so much double-sided tape. Honestly, if you could see the pile of double-sided tape I've got on my desk, it's hilarious. Right, so I'm just going to pop that so that it's like halfway on, halfway off. So you've got half of the oval this side, half of the oval that side. And make sure you've got it at equal distances here, just going by eye. And I think that's quite, quite all right. I'm just going to take that now and firmly press it into place. Oh, look at that. It's brilliant, isn't it? I love it. I'm just so excited by this project, I've got to say. Right, okie dokie. So now we want this just to finish off and sit on the top. Now, I have found that the best way to get something to stick to glitter 
sort of permanently is to key the area on the glitter piece on which you want your your base to sit okay so grabbing myself a paper piercer I'm just going to use my paper piercer now and I'm going to scratch away some of this glitter want to be sure blowing all over the place that this is going to stick really really well okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue there and I'm also just going to put some strategic bits of glue on these bits here so just down some of these tails okay. I'm just going to take my topper now and carefully adhere it into the centre like that. I'm just going to lift the lid now. I'm just going to press it. Just applying some pressure here. Okay. Now you just really do want to wait until that has dried and gone off. It will take a little while. But that is it. That is my gorgeous, quite large Christmas gift box. Moving that still because it still hasn't dried. Making sure it's in the centre. So I'm going to pop that one to one side. I'm going to bring in the one I made earlier. And I've got two of these babies. And I absolutely love it. So I hope that you have enjoyed that project and I hope it excites you as much as it excites me um, thank you ever so much for joining me today um, if you haven't already done so please 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 hop over and subscribe to my blog at www.papercraftwithcrafty um, I will be posting a video of this project to my blog together with a supply list of everything that I've used to make this project today you have access there to my online shop which is operational 24 hours a day so if you fancy spending your, um, your money at my shop well I would love to welcome you as a customer and uh, all my customers receive a lovely little thank you pack from me for ordering and if you are going to order please remember to use the hostess code which you will find on my blog and it's kind of in the the top right hand column if you like I have a different blog for uh, a different blog I, I have a different host co um, hostess code for each month and so if you use my hostess code now for November what that will mean is I will close my code at the end of November and all customers who have placed an order with me and remember to use that code are entitled to receive a lovely free gift from me in December. So thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I've really enjoyed putting this little project together. Please do come back and visit me again. Uh, like I said, I think this is project number eight. I'm looking forward to sharing project number nine with you. So thanks very much for joining me today. Bye for now.